Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear viewer, dear listener, my name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. I welcome you yet again to another wonderful episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. Please dear viewer, if you haven't done so already, uh, don't miss out and make sure you subscribe immediately to this channel so that when we, and we drop wonderful nuggets of wisdom such as the one that we're about to do now uh, in terms of uh, videos, you don't, you don't lose out. So please subscribe right away. If you've subscribed, thumbs up, and let's go ahead. And my guest today is Mpo Ulifile. We're going to talk about all things insurance and um, niche insurance at that. But we'll get deeper into that. Uh, but first, the preliminary, sir. Do you want to introduce yourself to the viewer? Yes, thank you so much. Um, my name is Mpo Ulifile, and um, currently um, doing work as an, ins as an independent insurance agent. Mm. And I do work largely for underwriters under contract. Basically, what I do is to get business um, and send it through to them and manage those businesses on behalf of, of my clients. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation and thanks for, for coming here to our studio and on, uh, on the Nuggets. Um, what is your educational background and your training? Um, my first degree is in business studies mm -hmm. and uh, I then went further to branch into insurance. Uh, so I studied insurance up to associateship. Mm -hmm. So I'm now an as a qualified associate in insurance. Okay. What does that mean exactly? What is an associate? Uh, generally, um, it's, it's a professional, it's a professional course. Um, uh, it's, it's with insurance, we, they, 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 we, they don't use um, they, don't, they don't use qualifications such as degrees. So it's you are an, either an associate mm. or a fellow because it's a professional course. It's mm -hmm. basically what happens in the industry. Mm. So you go to school to learn what you're going to apply directly to the industry. Mm. So that's what um, an associate means. And of course, if you're an associate, it means that you are, you are an associate of a certain body. Mm. Yeah, so um, I'm an associate of IISA. Mm -hmm. Yes. What does that stand for? I, I, ISA is um, it's an insurance, it's a South African mm. insurance institute. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, they actually deal with uh, insurance qualifications. Oh, okay. Yeah. So and we, now have, we are yet to have our local one. Tell us about your work experience. Uh, well, when I started insurance, at first I had uh, worked in different uh, industries as a, a different, a, a different um, positions. I worked with uh, EFA. It's EFA uh, is, is an associate fund administrator which, is, which basically deals with med insurance, medical insurance. And I worked there as a, I worked there as a data clerk, so that's where the interest in insurance came in. And before then, I had worked for a Mascom call center agent. So when I was with AFA, I because immediately after you finish school, you know you start looking for a job and you get anything that comes your way. So AFA came to to four, and uh, when I was there, I I learned that they have plans in future mm. to have a sub, a, an insurance subsidiary and then I said yes mm. this is where I have to position myself in you know so that's where the interest came in and I started I, I then had to pay for insu an insurance course because at the time I would go into um, newspapers looking for a job and I'll find that 
COP requested. COP requested. I was mm. like, what, what is this COP thing? Because I've never come across it. As you may know, uh, insurance is not something that our parents mm. teach at home. Mm. When, <laughs> whenever you ask what you want to be, you know, there are other careers that will come to the fore. Oh, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a doctor. Insurance is never there. Mm. So as a Motswana child, you grow up not knowing that there is a career path along insurance line. So now the COP thing was new to me. I was like, what is this? I started. What does it actually mean, COP prerequisite? COP prerequisite is, is just a proficiency um, certificate. Mm -hmm. It's more like your license. You know, you can know how to drive, but mm -hmm. you need to be licensed to drive. So mm -hmm. it's, it's the legal document mm -hmm. for anyone to sell insurance. Okay. So it's a prerequisite for in, if you are to sell insurance of any sort, mm -hmm. that is the license mm -hmm. so at the time i didn't know so i had to ask around to say but guys what i see a lot of this thing mm -hmm. in, in, in newspapers every advert will say especially because my interest was, has always been the financial sector mm -hmm. so stan big will say we're looking for so and so cop is an added advantage and like, what is this thing mm -hmm. so that's where I, I i developed interest and went on to um, enroll at uh, botswana accountancy college at the time, Botswana Accountancy College was the only college offering COP because it was not so common. And people, uh, naturally, our locals, because foreigners, um, your Zimbabweans, Zambians, they mm. were already ahead because they, uh, uh, for some reason, they knew mm. what the industry is. So, so they, they brought the COP um, qualification from their home countries. Yes, from their home countries. They're already, they're, they're already in the industry. Mm. Yeah, but uh, what then I noticed when I started being in the industry was that mm. most of us locals didn't know much mm -hmm. of insurance. We didn't even know that one can actually have a career mm. in insurance unless incidentally like the technical, you know, where you are hired by BIC to be a claims technician and all those. But there are so many fields in insurance. Am I right? There's... Um you know, short term, long term. Can you explain uh, which niche you are in and why you decided that on that on that niche? Yeah, there are so many um, uh, opportunities in insurance. Uh, you know, massive opportunities. I started off with with short term mm. because uh, when I started the COP, you know, you ask around, uh, they'll say COP short term, COP long term. Short term actually fascinated me, so I, I then went on to do COP short term. Just With basically cars, non life, non life, okay. non life that are uh, described. Well, what are the items that are covered? Uh, non life is basically um, your home insurance. Mm -hmm. I'll start with the home insurance. So, home insurance will be your uh, buildings, your, um, uh, your, your contents, everything inside your house can be insured, your building can be insured, and also the, there will be also additionals or extensions to any kind of cover that you you take mm. you know additions is more like where you buy pizza and they tell you can we add extra cheese mm. you know yeah so even with insurance we have that where we say but can you add this can you add that you know mm. just to to ensure that you are adequately covered mm. and to also have you uh, to give you peace of mind and also to increase your 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 take home as an insurance salesman yeah well it's uh, as an insurance salesman, that is one <laughs> misconception that mm. I, I, I want to deal with mm. today. Mm. You know, <laughs> there is always that misconception that you, you know we are we are we are, we are commission people. Mm. You know, but more than just commission people, yes, we get commission. Mm. Uh, but uh, the understanding there is that I get commission only once. Mm -hmm. You know, but whatever that I'm giving you would save you for life. Mm -hmm. So there's more benefit to, um, to you taking up insurance and uh, there's more benefit to me educating you because mm -hmm. more than, you know, I, I, I always say we, when, we, we, when we call ourselves Asians, it doesn't really exp uh, explain what we do. Mm -hmm. We're naturally financial advisors. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are financial advisors in the sense that we make you take financial decisions. You know, when you are at home, you are taking financial decisions, you, you look at everything inside, everything to do with money. Mm. To say, um, if I go out, if something happens to my car, would I be able to afford to fix it? It's a financial decision. Mm. What is the opportunity cost? Do I want to self-insure? 
because now self in, uh, insurance now is a risk transfer mechanism. Mm. So when you do your financial decisions, you see where you can put your risks. Mm. One, you'll say, this one I'll contain, this one I'll mitigate, this one, you understand. So that's what we do. We say to you, if you are to transfer this risk, what are the benefits to you? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. I'll give an example. If I say to you, get, a, get an extension of um, pipe bursting. Pipe when you, bursting, yeah. Yeah, when you take out insurance for your property. Mm. Um, you'd say, ah, but why? Mm. Until you have a bill of 60,000 mm -hmm. from water utilities mm. with underground leaking that you could not pick. Mm -hmm. Now you see those kind of things. So mm. you're saying, um, Am I better place to be able to financially meet mm -hmm. um, things that I did not anticipate? Okay. You understand? So, so that's basically what we do. That's what I'm I saying. I want to just go back to your journey a little bit. You said you started at short term. Yes. And then you uh, transitioned to which one? I started at short term and at the time I was just doing personal lines. Personal lines is just domestic insurance where um, house, car. So that's where I started because... Um, when you start, you need to learn more on on what the covers are, what they entail, you know. So you you start with just personal lines, mm -hmm. and then as I transitioned, I transitioned to the, now the commercial. Mm -hmm. Now the commercial is where now you are looking at businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, you uh, you are insuring assets worth millions, you are insuring liabilities worth millions. So that that, that that's the transition to say now you know, I can, I can be able to better mm -hmm. um, do this because I've learned the ropes. So, and at the time I was working as an eight to five employee at Alpha Direct. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started, uh, started building a book of insurance, you know. And as time went on, uh, then there's, you, you, as, as a salesperson, you remember as a salesperson, mm. the furthest you can go and in the organization is either you switch to do other things because remember when you study insurance you don't just study to be a salesperson mm. you study to be an insurer so i can actually do underwriting i can do uh, claims and many other functions within insurance but mm. i was m uh, mostly on the business development mm. so now the business development part would say okay now you are you're you, you, you are a commercial agent what's next mm -hmm. where do you go from now Okay. On one end, you could say, now I want to open my own brokerage. Mm. On another, you can say, I want to open my own agency. Another one would say, I want to be an independent agent and say to um, an, an underwriter that, give me a contract. I'll be giving you business. You'll be paying me for that business. I'll be managing that business. Mm -hmm. Now, that's where I'm, I currently am. Mm -hmm. And You run your own business? Now I'm independent. I have not... Uh, that there's there still um, now from independence. Independence is more is the same as I'm doing the same thing that a broker will do. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing that an agent will do. The difference now is that a, an agent or a broker are full fledged businesses with administrators. You know they have they have that setup, the structure. Yes, yes, yes. But with me, it's is basically more on the sales side and on the clean side mm -hmm. and managing uh, my clients relationships with the underwriter and all that so that's the function that i'm currently kind of doing mm -hmm. so um late last year mid last year i then decided to say that in the middle of COVID. in the middle of COVID, mm. actually i i i, I left work mm. i left work mm. before the first lockdown mm -hmm. just when COVID started I, I i was given an opportunity after direct actually offered that opportunity to say hey Mpo, what do you think about this you know, uh, it, uh, and you must remember that when you are a commercial agent working for a company, the company provides you with everything, mm. resources, you know, they pay you a basic salary that even if you don't bring a single business, <laughs> mm. you know, you have that comfortability. Yeah. There's a cushion. There's a cushion. So now that I was going to a different terrain at, at, in the middle of um, a pandemic, mm. and I said to myself, you know what, I've been here for, because the way I run my life, I put it in five year. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Five year chunks. Yeah. Like the government. <laughs> five year plans. <laughs> yeah, I put five year plans. I was like, ah, but you know, I've been doing this for five years. So now this is a new challenge. I, I would have to take it. Mm. So I took it. I said to them, I'm resigning. 
wrote them a resignation letter and started with mm. the the new arrangement where now they don't take care of anything. Mm. I, I You're on your own, but you I'm still work with them. Yeah, I'm on, So I'm why haven't you formed a company? Surely you, s you need a company to run a business these days. Uh, that, that's, that, that is the whole intention. I think um, early next year, that's when I'll be... I'll, I'll yeah, be it doesn't, shouldn't take that long. Advise you for free as a lawyer. Yeah. I think you need to form a company immediately if you're doing any business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you, you, there are so many risks and so many exposures. Yeah. That's true. And I think I, I'll take that advice. <laughs> okay. and so, uh, and that's when I started. And then because now the, 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 the contract that I signed was, was is, it, it's a non-binding contract. It's a, it's a contract that says you work with us to do exactly what we have agreed on, but you can do other things with whoever. Mm. As long as it doesn't impede on... It doesn't impede. It, it doesn't impede on, 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 on what, um, what we are doing mm. this side. So then I said, well, this could be an opportunity to also um, look into long-term insurance because I have studied uh, as an associate now as doing insurance as mm. a whole, mm. including long-term, pension, you name it. So I then said, oh, well, let me see if I... Because again, as you grow now, when I'm st when you're thinking of an agency, when you're thinking of a brokerage, now you need to broaden the scope mm. and not just be conformed to one part of insurance. So I started long term now with other guys, uh, a brokerage, mm -hmm. the ones, the guys in on the second floor, okay, yeah, of your building. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. I don't think maybe I should mention their names, but yes, yes yeah. yeah, so those, yeah, yeah, so I, I started doing that with them to say, guys. Um, I'll be working with you um, specifically on the long-term side such that um, when I do short-term with my clients, I also encourage them to uptake long-term pro yeah. uh, products. So that's why I Let's am talk now, now the nitty-gritties. Who are the main players in Botswana in terms of insurance? Well, insu insurance in Botswana is predominantly owned by foreign companies. That is at the ownership level, the mm. key players at the mm. ownership level is predominantly foreign companies. Mm. You talk your old mutual, you talk your uh, Hollard, mm. you talk your Bright, mm. all those underwriters. Uh, you talk your now we have Botswana Insurance also, which is local. Yeah, Botswana, Botswana Insurance Company is local. Although it's owned by... Yeah, I think it's, 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 a, it's a mixture. Yeah. But it's predominant. I'll say that the industry is predominantly um, owned by foreigners. Mm. On the made insurance, mm. a few locals uh, actually did come in. You know, um, on the long term, there is uh, what do you call uh, Ms. Vargas Insurance Company, Just Born Alive, Born Alive. Born Alive. Came, okay. You know, the likes of Bo. Um, I remember there was there was the one there was in on media. Well, Alpha is local. Yeah, Al Alpha is local, and mm. there's there's just a few players, and one most of them didn't live to see five years mm -hmm. in operation at as underwriters. Yes, as underwriters because that's where the bulk of the work. Why is, is there no longevity there? Why they, they well, don't last? Well, um, as uh, underwriters, insurance is a very uh, it's, 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 it's a liquidity industry and it, 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 it requires a lot of capital resources so therefore you find that um, I, I think in the Botswana, in Botswana market context break evening you you'll Just be breaking lucky even to, yeah you'll, you'll be lucky to break even mm. in your first five years of operation you'll be very lucky to do that mm. therefore it means that you your costs mm. you know your, what is so expensive because it's, 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 it's a risk industry, you pay claims. Mm -hmm. So now the issue there is this. I'll give you an example. Mm. For every one pula that comes as premium, mm -hmm. if you are to break it down to your costs, you'd have to have a reserve for your claims. Mm -hmm. The ones that you have not even incurred, mm -hmm. there has to be a reserve for that from that one pula. Mm. There is a reserve for, the pers for, for your salaries, people that you are paying mm. to actually and then there is the commission mm. for the, the, the your agent so the agents or the yeah. brokers or the brokers mm. so now here's the issue you create pools 
of insurance for different classes of insurance. You would have your motor pool, you have your um, other liabilities pool. Mm. Now from that pool, you also pay out. Mm. And remember, the licensing is also a capital requirement. The skills, mm. you know, the, the, these guys don't come cheap. So the only <laughs> way to win is to scale fast. To scale very fast and to also have a broader, uh, you know, some would have so many people putting in money. Mm. And also, again, some would, 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 would also have um, an anchor in terms of people who have invested in. Mm. You know, uh, if, you start, uh, you, you, if you start by having, say, Sifalan as, as, as an example, mm. you know, you'd have Sifalan as, as a portfolio. Mm. So the revenue there would also be able to pay for post car mm. in the meantime while you're still upkeeping. So now, if everything, if, if, if you are taking out from the pool more than what you're getting in, mm. it means that you have to pump in more money into yes, it. Yes, yes. Pump in more money into it until now. And then again, it's an industry of big numbers. Mm -hmm. The more businesses you get, the more you're most likely to realize profits mm -hmm. because now you, 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 are, you, are, you are going to be able to get a lot of revenue in terms of prim, in terms of um, mm. and also managing of managing your claims okay yeah so yeah you mentioned that you are with alpha they had a very successful campaign where they were saying massive in terms of the advertising slogan um, uh, who came up with that or are you part of that uh, that team well, um, with Alpha, Alpha doesn't have uh, a marketing department. Mm. So um, when, we when, when, I, when we started with Alpha, the business development um, section, there were about four of us in the business. It was basically the, the marketing wheel. Yes. So uh, in the, the, the first few years, the first years of operation, mm. it was mostly on um, uh, mall activations, Mm. and um, Facebook mm. and uh, a bit of radio here and there. So they also um, had an agency doing the marketing. Mm. So the massive taglines were Arjun and his team mm. um, uh, on, 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 on the advertising side mm. because Rona, uh, was, were basically... But it was very effective, I think. Yeah, no, it was because I, I remember the first few years because we are not such a big number and uh, at the time they d we did not have a structure mm. in terms of you know where departments so mm. it was a room there as a ceo mm. and then <laughs> you would have supervisors mm. in claims so it, uh, we, it was more like um where, where everyone sits down and say guys what can we do mm. and that's how it, it started and there was there was a lot of investment in marketing mm. i remember we used to ask Arun, but what, what what is it that you're doing mm. you're putting a lot of money into this thing mm. you know, more activations they were quite expensive mm. and at the time we didn't understand mm. he was saying to he'll always say to me Mpo, you don't understand look 10 years from now don't mm. get what is happening yeah, yeah, you know yeah. you're talking about the cost because you can see it now mm. but this cost 10 years from now mm. you reap the benefits of those costs so mm. they they invested heavily yeah. heavily on, on on marketing and indeed it it, it 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 did bring benefits even earlier than 10 years yeah it did and because i think i think they the, the, they, they had break even in the third year mm. third year that's what that was a massive Mm. success mm. and by they haven't looked <laughs> back since yeah now you wanted to tell us that the industry is growing and developing in in this country are you happy with the way it is growing and developing um i'll be like i'll be lying if i'll say i'm happy but i'm happy that there is more awareness mm. especially in terms of um in terms of opportunities that the industry brings mm. to locals, um, I, I, I'm quite happy that you know locals have now taken interest. Not mm. just locals at at, at, at at individual household level, mm. but locals even with business local people, they have now started looking at it as something that they can invest in. Mm -hmm. So I think um, where it is going now where we might be seeing a lot of locals mm. um, doing insurance, a lot of locals owning um, uh, insurance companies, because uh, well, like I said earlier, there's they just a small number of people um, mm. with, with insurance companies. But 
in terms of um, in terms of skills. Mm. Uh, you mean skill transfers? In, in terms of skills and skills transfers, you find that because of the the, the because of what I have said in the uh, uh, historically, insurance has never been sold as something that one can make a living out of in Botswana. Mm. So you find that even institutions yeah. ha have do not have um, insurance courses as you you'd imagine because there's so many of courses that um, programs that insurance. In, uh, that that that, uh, that deals with insurance, you know, mm. but they are not there. Even mm. if, like for instance, I, I, if I want to do fellowship, it's difficult. I can't find it locally. Even online, online, I'll find it in South Africa. I'll mm. find it maybe in Zimbabwe, mm. you know. And but high institutions institutions of learning, say for by uh, Isaho, mm. do not have insurance courses. You see how that it's, it's only BAC. BAC actually have insurance courses up to um, intermediary if I, or diploma, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. But with Baisa Ho, they go even up to degree levels. Mm. You know, they, they have uh, many uh, variety of programs mm. on insurance, media insurance, this and that. Mm. So you see that even with the education system, insurance is not really catered for. Mm. So wh what would you say are the main impediments to the growth of the industry or, or the main challenges? The main challenges, um, I'd, uh, I'd say, I look at it from, from um, individuals and the industry as a whole at company. From individuals, the main challenge is that we have not been orientated to see insurance as a career path. We have not been orientated to see insurance as a business opportunity. Therefore, um, you, you, you have less and less people interested in insurance. Or if they find themselves doing insurance is because they were forced by circumstances, not, naturally, not necessarily that they, they wanted to do it. Mm. And also the perceptions, you know, like, ah, like, I don't want to be paid with commission. Mm. You know? So those, because now, but now the, 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 the industry is, is growing because of, again, high unemployment rate now moves people from their comfort zone. Mm. You no longer see, you no longer hear somebody say, I cannot be paid with commission. Mm. So now this thing of being paid with commission, people are beginning to get it mm. and understand it better. And they're beginning to slowly but surely embrace it. I think when you're paid in commission, you, you, you have a greater chance of growth. You have a better chance of uh, reaching your goals, isn't it? Yeah, you do because... Um, Commissions, if, especially if you are hardworking and you are motivated. Yes. So and th th that's what I'm saying. Now people are beginning to see the the, the beginning because now even with 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 with, with, with companies, they are mm. moving towards saying performance based salaries, mm. all those kind of things. So they they are leaned more towards mm. you know performance and rewards. Mm. So now you if if you say I cannot work for a commission and then they hire you somewhere, they tell you, we're giving you this kind of targets and your performance would determine your rewards. Mm. It's very close to the person who is, who is being commissioned, who is commission based. So mm. uh, there's a lot of interest. And of course, um, with, with, um, with, with us doing so these kind of things, mm. it, it also brings the awareness mm -hmm. for a child out there to, when they're still young to say, Oh, but you know, there's the well, where the opportunities there. I can actually make a living out of this thing, mm. and you know, and people now are beginning to realize that there's actually insurance is actually one of the highest paying industry in Botswana. How so? I'll tell you what. Um, insurance agents, if you are getting a commission of 12.5% on non-moto and you're getting a commission of 20% on business insurance as a broker, and that is the standard that has been set by, 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 by the regulator, mm. not just in Botswana, but worldwide. The, the regulator standard. being what? NBFIRA? Yeah, not just NBFIRA, it's a world standard. Yes, yes. Yeah. So now, if you're a broker and you are getting that much, and remember, as a broker, your only cost is the administration cost. Mm -hmm. of getting the business yes you don't you don't take care of the risk mm -hmm. you understand i am following you yeah mm. so now if you are getting that 20 percent from 
a business that um, you, you, you give out. Uh, let's assume on a monthly basis, uh, as, as a broker, when you're really, because a broker would have many resources, mm. you'd, you'd possibly bring around business worth more than 10 million mm. on a monthly basis. So you see where this is going. It depends on um, the market the and, market and other dynamics, but it's reachable. It's, it's doable. Reachable. It's doable. So now, and... 10 million a year? Not a year. Some, a month. Some, some, some brokers would, would have 2 million a month, you know, and more. Because mm. with brokers, they work with all the underwriters. Uh -huh. They are not only conformed to... Um, confined to... Confined to just one... Um, Mm. Underwriter, so they have businesses that are giving um, all mutual alpha direct. So mm. and if you look at it, the 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 the, the opportunities are uh, the opportunities are not just at the brokerage level. Mm. The opportunities at there's reinsurance. Mm -hmm. Reinsurances are those guys that actually insure insurances. Mm. So there's there's a massive opportunity there. And naturally, uh, and generally, the, the, the salaries scales in the, in the insurance industry are, are very good. Let's it's talk about myths and misconceptions. Uh, can you just give us three or four major myths and misconceptions about, about the industry? The, 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 the most common one is that insurances are out there to cheat people. That is the most common one. Mm. Where does uh, it come from, that one? Some, um, some would be from experience, mm. where you, you, you have had a bad experience with, 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 a, with an insurance, where you, you couldn't claim, you have been moved from pillar to post mm. claiming. Some would be from hearing other people talking mm. about their bad experiences. Uh, some would be from reading. So why that particular one is a myth or a co misconception? Well, it's a myth and a misconception in the sense that once you, 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 you start appreciating and learning what insurances do and their importance in the, in the, in the overall, um, especially uh, in uh, commercial, not just commercial insurance, but I'll, I'll give an example of commercial insurance. Mm. When you're a business, once you start realizing how much placing your risk with insurance would save you a lot of money, then you, 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 you build and you actually build a relationship with underwriters. Mm. You start understanding that there are certain claims that are not admissible. You start understanding that there are claims that would be paid out and there are claims that will naturally not be paid out. Mm. But you know, the, 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 the misconception comes from the fact that one believes that once I'm insured, you know, I claim. Mm. Regardless. Regardless. Mm. You understand? So now the, the, the issue there is, is, is on education. We, that's why I say sometimes when we call ourselves agents. Mm. You know, we are not quite agents. Yeah, because we are not quite agents. Mm. We are business advisors. On, on financial risk, risk transfer. Yeah, so any other misconception? The other misconception is that insurance is expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like saying education is expensive. Yeah. Try ignorance. <laughs> yes. You know, you know. Uh, many people believe. You know, I I I I'll, I'll just um, quickly give an example on life insurance. Taking out a life insurance for one million say Puello Standard or any other, uh, any other life insurance for one million. Yeah. While you are a first time worker, you know, you, you, you find that for that kind of cover, you may end up paying around 350,000, uh, over, over 10 years, 20 years? Over 20 years. 20 Not years. only that. And you find that in 15 years, if you have been claim free on that life cover, mm. And it happens with life covers. I mean, I'm 35 now. I've not had an accident that would want me to, <laughs> to get uh, anything from insurance. You mm, understand? Mm. And it happens for the majority of us. Mm. There's just a few incidents where somebody would be permanently disabled uh, out of an accident, either from work or road accident or any other accident for that matter, or dreaded yeah. disease. It's, yeah, it's not every day that that, that happens. Mm. Now, after 15 years, they say to you, we're giving you back 120% 
of all the premiums that you have paid? 120%. 120% of everything that you have paid to us, of course, with um, provision for inflation and all those kind of things. But I say we're giving you back what you have given us mm. in 15 years. So now, when you look at it closely... And you can still claim on top of that? Yes, you can still claim. Mm. Now, when you, look at it, uh, you, when you look at it closely, this is what the insurance would have done for you. You would have invested mm. long-term, invested mm. for you. Mm. That's the first. Mm. Most importantly, you would have invested for your own, for your kids mm. or people that... Um, your dependents, let, mm. let me not say your kids because you could, you could have your brothers, your sisters as your dependents. Mm. You would have um, invested for your dependents mm. just in case something happens to you. You see? So now when you look at that and the 350 you are paying monthly, mm. you see where the weight is. And from that 350 you are paying monthly, the person, the agent, that is now me, mm. would be paid on just that one month. At the beginning? At the beginning. Mm. You see? So now the benefits thereof are more than what you are paying. Mm. So the, the, that misconception there. Yeah. The, 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 and then and the third one? The third one they'll say, you know, with insurance, things are never in black and white. There's always. Yeah, because there's, uh, there's always. I'm one of the people who said that yeah. there's, there's always, even as a lawyer, I've seen <laughs> that the, there's always, uh, there's some always some fine, fine print. There's always some fine print. Mm. You know, the, 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 it's a good thing that you brought that uh, as a lawyer you have found that out. Mm. You find that with, just like in any other industry, they, in terms of knowledge, there is no amount of knowledge that you can impart to a person fully. Mm. You understand? There are situations that would arise that would, would be, sometimes they are new, mm. they are only discovered, Mm. Sometimes you only get to know them now. Mm. But the reason why this insurance, insurance industry is composed in a way that there is an underwriter there, mm -hmm. there is an intermediary. The intermediary would be your broker, would be your agent, would be your... It, let me, let's call them agents now. Mm -hmm. Let's not use brokerage that, because they're all agents at the end of the day. So the intermediary there, the purpose of the intermediary because otherwise, our insurance companies will just sell their insurance directly. Mm -hmm. Now, the main purpose of the intermediary is education. Mm -hmm. If I come to you, not just education, it's education and representation. Mm. I'm basically one of your employees mm. on the risk side. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the issue. When I come to you, I'm not selling you a product. I'm educating you of a product that you need. Mm -hmm. A product that you don't know you need, but you need. So my job is to educate you on why you need this product mm. and why you should uptake this product. Not only that, I'm saying to you, in case you have... So why do you say there's no fine print? There is still fine print there. There is. Now, the, the, the challenge is here. I'll be coming to you. Um, let's say in your case, your finance manager is the one who deals with insurance, right? Mm. And apart from the finance manager, there's no, you don't have any employee who is possibly from a risk background and, or insurance or whatever. Mm. Now, when, when they take up insurance, most of the times people take up insurance not out of necessity. Mm. They take them out because they have heard mm. that they need insurance. Mm -hmm. That is why you find that when you, go, when you go to a company, they'll say, ah, but I'm insured with All Mutual. Mm. Uh, they have increased the insurance. We are mm. continuing with them. Mm. You see, that's one. Now, you're continuing with them. One, have you revised what you're insured for? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what you're insured for? Do you understand your rights as the person who is insuring? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because you need to understand your rights. Yes. You need to understand... I'll give you an example of car insurance. You need to understand what is expected of you as the owner of the car mm -hmm. when it's involved in an accident. When you understand that, mm -hmm. you know that if I have an accident mm -hmm. and I'm not badly bruised, I can make a call. The first thing that I need to do is to drop 
a notification to the insurance. Mm. I have an accident. Mm. When you understand your role, you know it that... It has to be, you know, within 48 hours or within, within one week? Within 48 hours. They call it reasonable time. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's I've where... I've seen pe people say 48 hours, yeah, you lose your claim because you're out by a day or something. I've, I've seen cases like that. Th that is where now, because with insurance, one of the key elements of insurance is mm. what, what they, call, they usually call outmost best faith mm. and reasonable men test. Mm -hmm. Now, reasonably, if I'm driving a car, passing here, and then something crosses the road, I still have the car, it hits, mm. it, it, it hits the side of the road, mm. really damages the car. Yes. Reasonably, because I'm not injured, mm -hmm. It, the, the, the reasonable expectation is that I'll be able to call the cops. The reasonable expectation is I'll be able to drop my agent a WhatsApp, mm. an email, an SMS, or a call, mm. or even call toll free line. Yes. To say I'm involved in an accident. That is reasonable. But mm. if I'm to have that car bumped into this, mm. and then a week later I call an insurance, guys, I was at CBD last week, badly damaged my car. Mm. You see? Not even a police report. It could have a police report. Mm -hmm. But you see, now, the moment... Yeah, but the key thing week, is notification to, yes. the, to, the, to the insurer. Because the moment it's a week, mm -hmm. red flag. Mm -hmm. Was there even a car? So you suspect that it's made up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now, if you have... That, that is now knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. Another thing would be knowing what is your right mm -hmm. as, as a client. To say, but what am I entitled to? Mm. what is it that what insurance have I taken up if say um, in your case you have taken up uh, professional indemnity mm -hmm. how far can your professional indemnity take you Take you? Mm. you know how much are you insured for anything above what you are insured for what happens what does the insurance do mm. in terms of a building what are the remedies you, you have to know what, okay if this building Burns to mm. ashes, God forbid. Mm. What are my rights? Mm. What, what is the, from the insurance side, what are the, the remedial measures they can put in place? You would then have to know that they can either pick to reinstate the building, build up the building as it was for you, mm. or they can either pick to give you the money. Okay. You see, now if you don't uh -huh. know, you'll say, but they refuse to give me the money. They say they're building my building, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm out of business. And if you know your rights, you'll know that you'd have, you'd have taken business interruption mm -hmm. for such cases where now this building is being built again mm -hmm. and you are out of business. So There's a lot you need to be advised on at the beginning, I guess. Yes, that's yeah. why there's a broker. Mm -hmm. The broker's job... Yeah, there are a lot of... Um, uh, Mr. Um, Olifile, there are a lot of... Youngsters out there, unemployed, working in the streets, not sure of opportunities. So can you take this time to take us through the opportunities that are available in this industry of yours? Um, there are so many opportunities. I'm just going to um, take us through a few of them. For those who are in entrepreneurs, those that do not uh, necessarily want to work for someone, and... Um, you can actually open up your own agency. All you need is to have a qualification, not necessarily a, a quali an, an insurance qualification. You need to have that. Any degree. Any degree. Mm -hmm. You know, and now the prerequisite, of course, will be from MBFIRA. They'll say for you to open an agency, you need to have a principal officer. Mm. And a principal officer is somebody that you hire. Mm. You, who has an insurance qualification so who's part of your in your payroll who would be in your payroll or can he be um an external advisor uh with, with the, 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 the usually they have to be full-time yes. because that 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 person is the key person between you between the insurance and okay the regulator so that's one opportunity you can open a you can a brokerage or agency or agency mm. Another is there a difference by the way well, the, 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 the difference is very thin. I think um, the difference would uh, mostly is the capital requirements mm -hmm. for you to open a brokerage. In the past, an agency would, would only give business to one underwriter. 
But now I think that has since been changed. They can work with different underwriters. Whereas a brokerage? A brokerage would work with all underwriters. Mm -hmm. And now a brokerage can do both. Can do both life mm -hmm. and short term. A brokerage, that's why a lot of people mistake many big brokers for, for underwriters. Mm -hmm. Your Aeon, your Mesh. Mesh is me on a bigger level. Okay, those are brokers. Yes. Mm. So they, they, and sometimes brokers would have agreements with, with would have um, contractual agreements with the underwriter to say, you guys have the skills, you have mm. everything, so you don't necessarily need, need to even come to us. Mm. When you go to a client, mm. you underwrite, you give them the rates. Okay. You also do a, 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 a big part of that administration yeah. side. So that's one opportunity, brokerage, agency, and others? Yes. And now, those are, those are where you, you, you are an entrepreneur, you don't want to work for anyone and you want to open. Now, in, 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 the, in the professional uh, space, career space, mm. there are so many opportunities there. The opportunities... Um, and the and then and the what they usually call loss loss adjustment loss adjusters mm. you know you can be a loss adjuster where you um do uh, where you do valuations mm -hmm. for buildings valuations car valuations and all that a loss adjuster is is it the same as a, an actuary yes okay so the the and in most cases for, for instance, you find that um, the, the loss adjusters would have systems. They also do accidents reconstruction, loss adjusters. So they, 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 they also do assessments where, when there is a car, or when there is an accident. And that, that you need specialized training um, yes, you do. in South Africa because it's also offered here? Well, I, I mean, if you are, say, you, you, you are a mechanic, a car mm. mechanic, mm. When, when a car has had an accident, what you do as an assessment is to go there to look at the extent of the damage, yeah. you know, and you write a report to the underwriter. I'm sure you've all had accidents. We know the, the bitter experience of dealing with those guys. Yes. Sometimes so, you think they should have put 7,000 and they say, no, 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 only 3,000. Yes. So They're tough, very tough guys. Very because they, they, they do that every day. Mm. You understand? So now that is a career opportunity mm. for somebody who is not necessarily an insurer. Mm. It's, um, well, it, 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 it's an industry on its own that feeds yeah. into, into how, how, how long does it take to get that qualification and what, what are the entry requirements? Be because what I've noticed with, 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 with insurance when I was doing associateship is that... Um, you, you actually learn everything. Uh, you do, uh, because I'll give you an example where you do property insurance. Mm. Where you do property insurance is, is basically an assessor's job. Mm. Because you yeah, are but learning. Don't you, are you saying you don't need a special qualification for an assessor or, or an no, actuary? No, you, you don't. You, you, you need, an actuary is basically on projections, mm. with numbers, you know, with um, the, the, they'll have scenarios to say the market will be like this, mm. you know, that's... Scenario but, playing, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the planning part. Mm. But as an assessor, your job is to know that um, in a building like this, mm. if the fire breaks at the kitchen, black, mm. where is it most likely to go first? Mm. And how fast can it go? The fire load and mm -hmm. all those things. So and to know, uh, to know the source, mm -hmm. like you are learning sources and how fast those sources. So it's it's a, it's an industry where even if you are an accountant, mm -hmm. when you are an accountant, you can be an underwriter. All you need to know, all you need to do is just to get maybe a certificate in insurance. Mm -hmm. You already have a generic degree, mm -hmm. so you learn very fast. So now, when you have a certificate in insurance, certificate in insurance will give you everything about insurance, mm. the outlook, the general outlook of insurance. Yeah. So that is one career opportunity, yeah. opportunity outside, uh, outside insurance. Mm. And, and the opportunity is in claims. And you mean being a claims consultant? Being a claims consultant mm. for an insurance company. 
they usually call them associates. In mm. insurance, they call them associates, mm. claims associate. Mm. So you, you, know, you can branch into that. Mm -hmm. When you have done any course, you just need to do short courses in insurance and with training, mm. you can be a claims person. Mm -hmm. you know. And they, uh, other opportunities would obviously be the normal ones, uh, mm. you know, your accounting, the functions, the normal business yeah, functions. Yeah, because any, any brokerage will qu require the basic functions. Yeah, the basic I mean, functions. Receptionists and whatnot. Yeah, all yeah. those. But mm. they, 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 there are a lot of opportunities there. In the tech, uh, the, 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 what, the tech side, yeah. you will develop applications mm. which uh, makes it easy for uh, insurance companies mm. and clients. You know, you develop um, marketing tools for insurances. You know, you also have um, industries such as car tracking industries. Mm. You know, there's a lot happening in the car tracking industries. Now we can track um, TVs, we can track a whole lot of other assets, mm. you know. So it's, it's a vast industry. Mm. There is a lot of opportunity in it. Yeah. A lot of Let's opportunity. Let's talk about insurance as a, a risk transfer mechanism. Yes. Um, you know, the role it plays in the overall scheme of things. Yeah. So um, I'm going to start with individuals. Individuals, I mean life, mm. life insurance. So life insurance, um, when, when you insure or you take out a life cover or you take out an investment cover, it might be um, taking out a cover for your kids' school fees. Mm -hmm. It might be. It's a, it's a financial decision. Mm -hmm. And now any decision that, that deals with finance is a risk. So you, 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 are, you have two things in place. Mm -hmm. There is where you say, my kid, I have a kid, he's a few months old. He's going to be, uh, so he's going to go to school at one point. Mm. I may mean need to, to pay school fees. So there's a decision. You can decide now to say, um, I'm only going to deal with him once he starts school. Or you can decide to say, no, but I can put aside mm. something to better buffer me at the time when they start school. Mm. That's insurance. You are transferring. Risk. You are transferring that risk now mm. to the insurance, mm. your school fees. Mm. Now, and... You, you would also say to yourself, um, life is unpredictable. And with COVID, is, it, it is even more unpredictable. You look around you and you say, who, is, who depends on me and to how much? That is your need analysis. Mm -hmm. We call it need analysis. We say to you, how much do you spend in your... How much do you give to do you spend on your wife? How much do you spend on your kids? How much do you spend on your mother? How much mm. do you spend on generally everything? Mm. And let's assume something happens to you. You pass away. Mm. You know, we are all going to die. It's inevitable. Mm. How do you think all these people are going to survive for, for a period of time? So you can either decide to say, okay, no, but I'll put aside money for them mm. on my own mm. or I take that risk to the insurance. Now the risk now the risk there is if you put it on your own, let's say you say I'll put ten thousand pula in a safe a savings account or whatever account. Are you and you're say we were looking at the, 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 an eventuality happening. Now if say in your need analysis you realize for these people to survive for the next two years, four years, five years, or if it's your, if, if it's your kid, for them to survive through the rest of their college life before mm. they can start fending for themselves, they're going to need 1.5 million. Yes. Now, if you put aside your 10,000, how long do you think you'll reach that 10 million? It's a good question. <laughs> you see? Mm. Now, mm. that's where it comes in. Mm. Now, when in the process of putting your 10,000 and a dreaded disease comes in. Mm. How long do you, th in terms of medical, med insurance, mm. do you think you can afford from your salary mm. to pay for whatever that will be needed to save your life? Mm. So that is the risk transfer mechanism. Mm. Now, for a company, you say to yourself, if, if, I, if I'm to put aside money 
to say if this building was to burn out, how long would it take me to reach my, uh, the money that I've used to build this, the, the, mm. this building? But if I put it in a pool, and because it's a risk transfer in the sense that you are taking risks from different people mm. to one place, so they're sharing that risk. So you are, you are, you are, we are facilitating, we are, mis we are basically facilitating mm. to say, Mr. Mohobe, Mpo, and you, and you, and you share these risks such that your premium, my premium can pay for your claim, mm. even if I don't claim. So it's a risk transfer mechanism. Even, if, even when you are doing your books of accounts, you look at those, the, 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 those aspects to say, mm. can I afford this? There are risks that you can afford. You can yeah. afford to replace this chair. Mm. You know, but you cannot afford to always have two million sitting around, mm. uh, say, uh, something happens to you. And with COVID now, mm. it has become more unpredictable. One minute I'm with you, you are fit. The next minute, you mm. have COVID. Okay. You As know. we get closer to the end, can you just share what you are currently doing now and what you can do for, for the people now? What I'm currently doing now, um, uh, at a personal level, I'm working on building a sustainable insurance book mm -hmm. at a personal level. And more than that, I think um, at, 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 at the top of the things that I want to do is to encourage or to be able to put out insurance there to extract interest from mm -hmm. youth, especially the mm -hmm. unemployed, not just the unemployed, to say to them, guys, this <laughs> industry is lucrative. Mm -hmm. People are making money in this industry. Mm. People are making money in this industry. And if we take interest in the industry, we might just grow it. I'll tell you what. Do you know, how, uh, uh, do you know that in Botswana we have about 5%, less than 5% insurance uptake? Whereas in other countries? In other countries it would be 15%. Um, it's because of those myths you mentioned. Yeah, it's because it's and those because uh, of misconceptions. Because misconceptions. even even very astute people think that insurance is an, is is a ripoff. Yes, that it's that perception is entrenched. It's it's everywhere, mm. and you know, and another misconception that I I, I, I skipped is some think insurance is for rich people. Mm -hmm. it's, they think insurance is out of affordability. Mm -hmm. You know. And insurance is not out of affordability, it's out of necessity. Mm. You understand? It's more like food. Mm. You buy food not because you afford them, you buy them because you have to eat. And insurance mm. is just that. You when, you, when you said earlier that there are a lot of opportunities, I'm reminded of Warren Buffett, who owns an outfit um, which, which is an insurer. Um, it, it has a little lizard as a as, as an icon, and I think it's called, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company, do you know it? Uh, uh, no. Geico, Geico. Oh, Geico. Yeah, so Geico, um, Warren Buffett calls it his rocket fuel. Insurance is his rocket fuel. Yeah. He takes all the insurance uh, payments and channels them into his investments. So once he was asked in an interview, you are the greatest inventor, he says, get an investor. He said, no, I'm not a, an investor so much as I'm, I'm in, into insurance. Um, because he uses insurance money that it comes, yes. the excess, to reposition it and invest it in other industries. And that's what a lot of um, our insurance companies locally do. Yeah, I want, you, I want you to speak to that at the highest level. You can actually leverage the, the premiums for other purposes. Yes, because... Like I say, uh, you know, uh, you, you, in terms of, um, because it's a numbers thing, mm. so you can actually predict mm -hmm. in terms of claims. And remember, insurances insure. So if I'm insuring your business, I'm sharing that risk with, with an in, a reinsurer. Mm. So I'm also cautioned. So there's all, whatever access that I have. If one needs to look into how fast an insurance company can grow. Mm. We have our own case study with Alpha Direct. Mm. I remember the first time Alpha Direct had made five million revenue. It mm. celebrated. You mm. know, it was a big fit. Mm. And at the time we found it, you know, it was really big. Mm. But 
five years, six years down the line is a company that is projecting 100 million. Mm. You understand? And mm. it was just not too long ago, mm. you know, projecting five million and actually reaching that milestone mm. was huge. Mm. And as you grow, they are special, the, 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 the specialized insurance is pro products, mm -hmm. you know, th those that need professionals. Mm. So it hires everyone, it hires engineers, it hires forensics, it hires almost every, every industry. Mm. It, it hires investigators because at the highest level now, you, you need somebody who can tell mm -hmm. if this was not a defect mm. from building and who can tell you that. Mm. It's an what engineer, movement. structural engineer. Okay, or time is not our friend. We are running out of time. Um, uh, this is the time of the show when you get to ask me a question. Yeah. Mm. Um, I have one question for you. Though. Yes. How, because I understand you started off as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. How did you move from, um, from the courtroom as a lawyer mm. to property? It was, a, it was more like an evolution. Initially, I just wanted to have a roof over my head. When I was tired of paying rent, I just decided to put money aside so that I can buy my first house. So after the house, I got tired of paying a landlord uh, where I was renting from the office. So I decided to develop my own office. And then from there, it was a matter of other events. For instance, I had a, a legal challenge where I was being sued where I was facing the prospect of losing my license as a lawyer. And then I started looking at other options. And then as I also got deeper into personal development, I met a gentleman called Robert Kiyosaki uh, through his books. Yeah. And he sort of uh, stole me away. And I realized that as a professional, there's so, such a limited amount of things you can do in terms of A, your income generating capacity, B, your capacity to influence, uh, society. So it was, um, it was a decision based on a uh, poor dead outlook to mm -hmm. say, look, let me create independent income streams and diversify my income stream. So once I decided that, then I got more and more into property. Every little excess tab I got from the law, I put into property. And then eventually in 2013, when it started, 2013 or thereabouts when we were developing the CBD, I decided that I needed to put my undivided attention in development and in acquisition. That's how we're able to grow our doors, as they call them, Americans, mm -hmm. meaning our units, from about 93 to about, from 93 then to about 350 now, and we're still growing the, the portfolio. So it was a, an evolution more than a, a revolution, if you like, in terms of the decision-making process. Interesting. Mm. But do, do you see um, this market crashing with COVID? And no, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'll yeah. answer that one uh, <laughs> separate off camera. Yeah. Now, look at that, that camera, sir. And you've spoken extensively. You now need to sort of wrap it up and leave them with words of inspiration and encouragement. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. You know, um, the job that I do, I've come to love it so much. It's an exciting job. It's, 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 it's challenging. You know, you, uh, you learn every day. There is a lot of adrenaline associated with it because you deal with people's money and you deal with people's assets. And I'll say to everyone out there, um, we're going through a very difficult time, not just uh, health-wise, but we went through a very difficult economic time in our country and there's still a lot of things in the market, especially in the insurance industry that one can do. You know, development, developing products for insurance companies, one just needs to put a bit of time into thinking what do people need and how can they be helped. So let us continue reading, let us continue learning, let us continue asking the right people the right questions about certain industries. And one such industry is, is um, insurance. Think about this industry and see how you can be part of it. You'll, you'll never regret this, that, that, that decision. Now, it remains for me to thank you, uh, sir, for taking the time out. 
uh, I don't know whether to call you Mpo or... Uh, yeah, give Mpo. Yeah, for taking the time out and, and just opening up on this insurance industry. You've demystified it, and I'm sure that uh, the viewers may want to follow up with you. Can you please share your contact details? Um, if you have any questions... If you have anything that uh, you want to insure, my numbers are 74146484. Uh, that is also my business WhatsApp number. And then my other number is 74473971. You can also catch me at mulifile at alphadirect.co.bw or you can also email me at mpoulifile.info at gmail.com. Social media? Social media, my, I use my names. Um, my name in social media is Mpoli Um Yet I'm not much into other social media platforms, but on, on Facebook, I have a page called Mr. Mpoli Fide where I, sh I share insurance insights on it. And um, I also have my personal, uh, pay, uh, my personal, uh, my personal address at Mpolifil, Facebook. Okay. All right, it remains for me to thank you once again. You've been a wonderful guest. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.